This is the new 2023 Hyundai Ioniq 6, and it's a fully electric sedan that's weird and futuristic. This shouldn't surprise you too much because Hyundai has already given us the Ioniq 5, which is a fully electric crossover that's weird and futuristic. But now, this is here as well, the Ioniq 6, the latest in Hyundai's fully electric Ioniq car line. And today, I'm going to take you on a thorough tour of it and show you all of its quirks and features. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era with free listings. You can list your cool car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some fantastic sales recently, including this Audi RS7 sold for just under $58,000. This wonderful Toyota Land Cruiser pickup, old school, sold for around $43,000. And this wonderful Lotus Esprit V8 sold for just over $60,000. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool, interesting car from the modern era, the 80s and up, Cars and Bids is the place to do it with daily auctions, great selection, and free listings. Check it out at carsandbids.com. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Ionic 6 by starting with the key, which you can see is oval, egg-shaped, kind of interesting, but the cool part is if you tilt it on its side, it's making the Hyundai logo, the button pattern and the space between makes the Hyundai H, you can see it here, compared to the badge on the car, and that is a very clever little detail in the key that you might not notice unless you've seen this video. In addition to the circular oval key, this car also has quite a circular general shape. You can see very streamlined, very windswept, very curvy, going all the way from the front to the back. It's all aerodynamic curves and a teardrop shape for this car, which is ironic because the main theme of this car, outside of its curvy shape, is square pixels. This car is all about pixels, just like the Ionic 5 was. Well, this, the Ionic 6, is also very pixelated. Let me explain what I mean. We will start up front where you can see the running lights. The orange running lights are actually just a bunch of squares that look like pixels, like you would see on a computer display, especially from the old days, the 80s and the 90s. If you look even closer in the headlight housing, you can see even more little squares and they're intended to represent pixels, both on the top and on the bottom. It's all pixels inside the headlight cluster. And same deal with the turn signals on the mirrors. Instead of just a standard light, you have this little light up pixel display, which carries the pixel theme onto the side of the car. But the place where the pixels are especially obvious is in back. This rear light bar you can see is all little tiny squares going across the entire rear of the car. From side to side. And when you turn on the headlights, the taillights light up, and a lot of these pixels light up too, and really emphasizes that pixel square theme, even though this is such a curvy, streamlined car. It's all little square pixels all throughout the back of this car. When you put on the brake lights, however, things get even more pixelated, because look at the third brake light, a massive piece in the center of the rear that is all designed in pixels. Once again, really emphasizes that pixel look back here. And of course, the standard brake light on the body of the car also lights up even more pixels, so the whole thing is really pixelated when you're looking at it from the back. And the pixels don't stop there. If you want to get into the trunk, you press on this little square with little squares inside it. Pixels within a pixel. And it's the same deal if you want to get into the charge port. You can see the charge port door is here, and the place where you tap to open it up is a few pixels. Once again, continuing the theme all throughout this car. Car. And there's more of that stuff on the back. You put this car in reverse, and the reverse lights light up in the bumper as pixels, as you can see. And directly above that, the rear reflectors this car has are also pixels. It is all pixels in the Ionic 6.
By the way, one other pixel item worth noting, inside the charge port door, you have little pixels in there that will actually show your current charge status. The pixels light up as you become more charged, and that's also true in the front. You can see these little pixels at the bottom, sort of at the base of the front bumper, which will also show your charging status as your car is charging. So you walk out to check on it. You don't have to like look inside and see how charged it is. You can just look at your pixels. But anyway, besides the pixels, there are still some interesting quirks and features on the outside of this car, one of which is this rear wing situation. This contains the third brake light that I showed you before, but in addition to being a cool, quirky, pixelated third brake light, it also looks like a pretty legit rear wing. This is the kind of thing, dare I say, you might expect to see on a Porsche 911, this giant wing spanning the entire rear of the car and jutting out from the base of the rear window kind of makes it look poor like a big old rear wing in the back, but interesting in an electric sedan. Another interesting quirky feature on the outside of this car, as you can see up front, you have these little panels. Right now they're in place. Why wouldn't they be? Well, they open up to provide more cooling if you need it. Like if you turn on the air conditioner and the car needs more cooling, those panels can open so more air can come in and cool the car. However, if you don't need the cooling, you get the AC off, the panels stay in place to provide better aerodynamics dynamics, so air isn't flowing in there, but instead passing around it, which may increase your range just a little bit. However, probably the quirkiest thing on the outside of this car, except for maybe some of the weird pixels, is the antenna, which is usually never quirky at all. But in this car, it's translucent. You can see through it. This isn't just a black fin. If you look closely, you can see the inner workings of the antenna in case that's something that you want to see. Ferrari has transparent panels over its engine so you can look in and see the mighty powertrain. Well, this has a transparent panel over the antenna in case you ever wanted to see what's inside the antenna. The mighty antenna, there's a transparent panel, which is certainly weird. But anyway, next we move inside the Ionic 6, and to get inside, well, you can see the door handles are flush with the body, but that changes once the car is unlocked. You can see then they pop out, and you can pull on them and open up the door. When you do open up the door, you notice two interesting things. One, on the door sill, you have more pixels. Right next to where it says Ionic 6, you also have pixels, which seems fitting next to the name of the car, since pixels are such a big theme. You also have a storage pocket on the door, which you can see here. It looks like a standard storage pocket, but actually it is translucent also, just like the antenna was, same material. You can see my fingers behind it. This isn't just a standard door pocket panel, but for whatever reason, they decided to make it just the littlest bit see-through, just like the antenna. And you have the same situation in the center console. There's a little center storage area beneath that, and the walls that rim this storage area are once again translucent. For whatever reason, there's a little bit of visibility past those little walls and into that storage area. A little quirky and weird. But anyway, moving on with the Ionic 6 interior. Inside this car, it's pretty weird, but not that weird if you've spent time in the Ionic 5 or some other recent Kia and Hyundai models. There's some odd touches, but they've been used in other vehicles. For example, getting it into gear. The gear lever is actually a little dial and a giant stalk coming off of the steering column. You can see it here. You push it up for drive, down for reverse, park is a little button at the end. Kind of strange, but that's how this car is and the Ionic 5. Another thing you'll notice in here that mimics other similar Hyundai and Kia vehicles, the dashboard is very flat. You can see no curves and lines like you have in a lot of brand new cars. Instead, completely flat, horizontal, all the way across, and the center console as well. Totally flat, straight lines. It's like straight lines are back even after years and years of automakers switching more to curves and interiors. And this interior is all flat. Again, similar to the Ionic Ionic 5 and other similar models. With that said, one interesting thing about the dashboard in the Ionic 6, there are little wings at the end, little wing tips on both sides, the driver's side and the passenger side. Not really sure why, but they're there. It almost gives kind of a flying appearance on the dashboard. Seems strange, but then again, it fits with this car. Strange. Now, another interesting quirk in this interior is the center of the steering wheel, which does not have a Hyundai logo. It doesn't say Ionic 6. Instead, it has four pixels, as you can see, four pixels displayed here in the middle. And when you turn on the car, they do just a little bit of an animation and actually light up and turn on. And they do more than that. They have a few different things 
things they can do, one of which is when you're using the voice control system in the car, as I am right now, the pixels change color from white to like a rainbow color to let you know that the car is listening to your voice command. So if you're wondering, hey, did it hear me? Hey, is it listening? Well, the pixels will show you that in fact it is. When you turn off voice control, they go back to white until they're ready. Apparently the pixels also have a few other functions, but that's kind of a primary one listening to you as you give voice commands. And next up, there are some cool and interesting hidden tricks in the infotainment system. You have this center screen and it has a few hidden quirks, probably the most notable of which is being able to change the ambient lighting color in this interior. Now you can change the upper and lower ambient lighting colors separately. So you can have two different colors there. And there are some bizarre pre-selected color choices such as healing forest. <laughs> and beautiful day. I'm not sure how to represent those in colors, but the people who created this car have figured that out. Of course, you can also create custom colors if you want your own upper and lower colors. You can decide all that yourself, which is kind of a cool little touch. Now, other cars offer the ability to change your ambient lighting colors, but probably the coolest thing here is you can configure this so the colors will brighten and dim as you accelerate and slow down. So you accelerate and the colors get brighter and you slow down and the colors dim, which I haven't seen before and is kind of cool. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you that because I cannot yet drive the Ionic 6. This is a pre-production car. It doesn't come out here in North America until early or spring 2023. So next year, and I'm sure I'll be able to drive this as we get closer to this car's on sale date. But for now, we just have to imagine the colors brightening and dimming as you drive along. And I'll show you that once I get behind the wheel and drive this car in a few months. Now, other cool features hidden in the in infotainment system. For one thing, you can enable a key card. When you buy this car, you don't just get the egg-shaped Hyundai logo keys. You also get a key card that you can enable, and it's like the size of a hotel room key. You can keep it in your wallet in case you lose your keys. It's always there, and then you can get in your car and start it up even without your keys. And it gets even better because you can program your smartphone to be used as a key. This is happening in more and more vehicles. It's not all that unusual anymore, but you don't even really need keys. As long as you have your phone on, on you, the car will recognize you when you walk up. It'll unlock and start and drive away all without any keys at all using your phone as the key. Now, next up, also cool and interesting in this infotainment system is a feature that Hyundai calls quiet mode. I've shown this in some other Hyundai and Kia models and it's awesome. Basically, it allows you to turn off the rear speakers entirely so that music only plays through the front speakers. The thinking is if your kids are napping or sleeping in the back seat, you don't want to wake them up with music, but you still want to listen, you can have the music just coming through the front speakers and it won't be as loud in back. You also in this car have the sounds of nature, which is intended to provide preloaded nature sounds you can listen to. If you don't want to listen to the radio or your Bluetooth audio music, whatever, you can listen to these. Now, I've talked about sounds of nature in other Kia and Hyundai models before, but the cool thing here is there are new sounds of nature, entirely new sounds of nature, in fact, including one that's called Sailing Ship which is kind of interesting because not only is that not a natural sound, but it also plays music while you're listening to some water sounds. Take a listen. Not exactly sure how that qualifies as a sound of nature, but apparently it does. My very favorite sound of nature, though, is called Experience the Universe, which sounds like this. Frankly, this sounds like you're driving along in a planetarium. It really sounds like any moment some deep voice is going to come on and tell you how the Earth formed 40 bazillion years ago. It is hilarious to listen to that as you drive, but you can in your Ionic 6. Now, aside from those little hidden interesting quirks and features in the infotainment system, it's important to point out that the infotainment system is relatively easy to use, simple, configurable, very responsive to the touch, intuitive. It's a good infotainment system, and I've reviewed it in several other Hyundai and Kia models. Nothing especially distinctive or unique here, except for the fact that it's just good, easy, usable. I do wish the home screen was a little bit better and a little bit more intuitive, but aside from that, this is an excellent infotainment system, easy to 
tap, touch, figure out, and you're going to like it. Now, it's also worth pointing out that over-the-air updates are available for this infotainment system and this car in general. Hyundai says this is their first car that can get over-the-air updates beyond just maps. It also includes firmware, so you can wake up in the morning, go out to your car, and have completely new features you didn't have yesterday, which is a cool concept. Now, also worth pointing out, next to the central infotainment screen, you have a gauge cluster screen here. Same size, 12.3-inch display, and very high-quality display. It's not quite as configurable as what you can get in some rivals that can show you a little bit more information, a full-screen map, multiple different screens at once. This limits your configurability a little bit, but it does show you good information, high resolution, high quality, and it's got kind of a nice calming look to it. And that's there too, a nice gauge cluster screen. And next up, we move on to the back seat in the Ionic 6. And first things first, it's pretty roomy back here. Roomier than I would expect given this car's size. This car is about 191 inches long, about the same length as a Toyota Camry. It feels a little bit bigger than a mid-size sedan back here. Now, it's worth pointing out, it doesn't feel as large for its size as the Ionic 5 feels for its size, if that makes any sense. The Ionic 5 is a compact crossover that feels almost like a large crossover in back. This is a mid-size sedan that feels like a larger mid-size sedan in back. It's not huge back here, but it's decent size. Now, I suspect the reason this doesn't feel quite as big in back as the Ionic 5 is the teardrop shape of this car. When you do that, you limit rear headroom if you push the seats too far back, so you're kind of stuck pushing the seats a little further up than you might want otherwise in order to get the design, the styling, to look like it does. But anyway, onto the rear seat crooks and features. There aren't actually really all that many. Worth pointing out, you do have climate vents back here, which is nice, and USB-C ports for charging stuff, which is also nice. But probably the quirkiest thing back here is this strange door pocket for storage. You have a lower door pocket, which is more traditional, and then this smaller one, which I guess you could put a smartphone there or something, but a rather small door pocket if that's what you want for storage in the door. Otherwise, fairly traditional and fairly large back seat. And next up, we move on to the cargo area in the Ionic 6, and it's important to point out that this is a trunk, not a hatchback. Even though this car has kind of a hatchbacky teardrop shape, and even though these hatchbacky teardrop electric cars have been popular, this car has a trunk, a standard traditional trunk like you would get from a sedan. Now you can see in here, it's a pretty large trunk. There's a small opening, but if you get in there and look, it goes very deep in there, and you can release the rear seats from the trunk. These little pull tabs back here, you pull on them, and the rear seat is released, and from there you can obviously add to your trunk space at the expense of rear seat space, but it's there if you need more storage for larger items. So pretty big trunk in this car, but indeed a trunk, not a hatchback. Now, next up, since I'm around back, one of the other interesting features of this car is you can use it as like a giant power bank. <laughs> Check this out. You open up the charge port door and the car comes with this accessory here. If you plug that in to the charge port, you can pull off a cap on the other side where you can see a standard household power outlet. And from there, you can use the battery power the car has to power whatever you want. From a cell phone, if you just want to charge your phone using your car, all the way to like a bouncy castle at a child's birthday party or a blender or a toaster or whatever you might want to charge, you can do that using this accessory in the charge port. But anyway, next we move up front, where you have, well, not an engine, since this is an electric car, but instead you have slightly more storage up here. You can see a little storage compartment. Not huge, but it's there, a little extra storage where you can stick stuff if you don't want it in the trunk, the passenger compartment, whatever. Now, to get under the hood, or the front trunk, you pull this latch in the driver footwell, like you do on basically every other car, and then you come around here, and there's a latch in the front, and you can open it up, and then you can get to your storage. Not exactly the easiest or most convenient storage to access, but it's there if you want a little extra space. And since I'm up here, let's talk powertrains. Even though there's no engine up here is where I usually talk about powertrains, so let's do it. There are two versions of the Ionic 6 that have been announced already. You can get the top of the line model, which has all-wheel drive, fully electric, 320 horsepower, and about 450 pound-feet of torque. Pretty substantial numbers for a car like this. And indeed, it does 0 to 60 in under 
five seconds, according to Hyundai, and it has a range of around 310 miles. That's a Hyundai estimate, not EPA, but it gives you an idea. Now, there's also going to be a base model rear-wheel drive car that has, well, less of everything except range. 340 miles of range in the base model car, rear-wheel drive, 225 horsepower, and 260 pound-feet of torque. Still decent numbers, but nowhere near as blistering as the all-wheel drive version. Now, Hyundai hasn't mentioned pricing yet for the Ionic 6, but you figure the Ionic 5 starts around $41,000, $42,000. I figure this will be pretty similar to that. Maybe a little cheaper, maybe a little more expensive. We will find out. And as for market position, you may be wondering who's going to buy this over the Ionic 5. And the answer is people who still want sedans. They're out there. People want a car-like driving experience, don't necessarily want to cross over, or they don't like the Ionic 5's kind of unusual styling. Here's something maybe a little bit more traditional. Obviously, these cars share the same platform, the same architecture, and the same powertrains. Those power figures are the same in the Ionic 5 as the Ionic 6. So basically, these are the same cars, just with different bodies, different interiors, and you can kind of pick which one you prefer. And so that's the new 2023 Hyundai Ionic 6. Like I said, I can't yet drive the Ionic 6, but I am excited to get behind the wheel early next year before this goes on sale here in North America. But for now, that is your most thorough tour yet of this quirky and futuristic electric sedan.